And a few other suffrage women um, did not support Lockwood, be, not because they didn't admire her effort, but because they were afraid that she would be treated with ridicule and that that ridicule would spill over to the women's movement. So it was, it was complicated. And I think it shows us again that when we talk about social movements, whatever we talk about, whatever period, they're never unified. There are always you know, differences in people's point of view about what should happen. Why uh, did she drop out of sight, as it were, in the public side? Why isn't she well known now? Yeah, I have a list of about, um, oh, I don't know, five or, or six explanations. Um, the first is, I think, uh, a lesson that most politicians know. If you want to be remembered, either write your autobiography or get someone to write your biography. She had a niece by marriage who began her biography, but then she died. And I think the niece found it difficult to complete it. This woman was very loyal. I've, I've read the letters of the niece, which are in the archives of Swarthmore College. And she's just despairing. You know, First World War II comes, and it's very difficult to, to do this kind of thing. The war ends. She goes back to the project. She's not a professional writer, this niece. She gives a New York publisher a manuscript, which I've never seen. I have no idea how good or bad it is. But you know, 1950, they weren't interested in women. And so she couldn't get it published. So that's one part of it. Another part of it is that when Lockwood died, she really only has right near her this one grandson. He's a person of limited resources. She has this house full of uh, a lifetime's you know, reform activities. She, she ran a small lending library of peace materials. Um, it's just chock-a-block full of stuff. I've seen descriptions of it. Uh, you know, a clutterer's delight. And he comes in, maybe because he needed money, maybe because he had an ambiguous relationship with his grandmother, and he sells almost everything in her house for scrap paper to the Salvation Army. So that was bad news for the commercial writers who tried to write Lockwood's biography mid-century. I have letters when I visited the Library of Congress and the National Archives. Different archivists there have shown me private correspondence in their files. Well, they'll get a letter from a writer in Chicago, a writer in New York, saying, you know, I'm interested in doing this book on Belva Lockwood. What materials do you have? So people were thinking about her, at least a small number of people were thinking about her, but the materials were so dispersed that nobody could do the book without grants. And that's why I'm so grateful and I'm so happy that you mentioned it. I had the support of the National Endowment for the Humanities, a government-funded uh, agency, the Wilson Center, also government-funded in my university. Yes? So they want to do what comparisons uh, that you care to make with uh, Mrs. Lockwood and Hillary Clinton? OK, great, timely question. What comparisons would I make with uh, Belva Lockwood and, and Hillary Clinton? Um, Although Lockwood had a great deal of experience in reform politics, she certainly did not come to her 1884 campaign with the same kind of political experience that Hillary Clinton. I mean, Hillary Clinton you know, was in the White House as a spouse for eight years. Uh, you know, we've learned that, that spouses um, just spend a lot of time listening and participating and learning. And of course, Hillary Clinton has been in the Senate. So I think there's a difference in, in the levels of experience that the two women had. Um, I think that they, they were similar in being smart women who are quick studies. Um, I, I was talking today at a high school, and I was asking people to think about some of the reasons why, after women got the vote, we didn't have more women going into politics after 1920. And there are a lot of reasons. You know, women didn't have money. The party bosses, forget it, didn't welcome them. We have a single membership district system here in the US, which disadvantages newcomers, women, you know, everybody. One young student said to me, well, you know, isn't part of the explanation also that historically, we've thought of women as being governed by their emotions? 
and uh, that men you know, are governed by their heads and not by emotions. And so we, perhaps people feel that women can't be political leaders because they would act on the basis of their emotions. Well, what's so interesting, and we were talking about this at dinner, is that, of course, Hillary Clinton is constantly being criticized for being cold and reserved, right? <laughs> not being effusive and warm and nurturing and so forth. And, and I suspect that, that uh, she was probably like Lockwood in that, that Lockwood, you know, was a businesswoman. She had become an attorney. She had struggled hard. She was no nonsense. And um, uh, I think Lockwood had a great sense of humor. And people who know Hillary Clinton privately says, say that she has a, a fabulous sense of humor. But I think that certainly for Lockwood, and I know Lockwood better than Hillary Clinton, um, that you know, it was such a tough world for them as pioneering women that, um, that they had to hold their emotions back and perhaps sometimes did seem more reserved so I think they're, they're similar in, in that respect as well. Both committed to, I think both committed to equality. Yes? I'd like to extend that last question and answer. Uh, you've probably heard that, uh, heard of these polls where people are asked about how they would vote if Hillary Clinton were the can, uh, candidate for president. Mm -hmm. And a certain percentage of people say, I would not vote for her because she is a, a woman. woman. Right. I can't remember how big that percentage mm -hmm. is or whether it changes with time. Uh, do you think that's a factor at all? Absolutely. I think it's absolutely a factor. And I think it will be a factor in certain areas of the country more than others mm -hmm. um, for a variety of reasons, both sort of secular and sectarian. I think we have certain areas of the country that are more open to certain kinds of change and others that say, you know, let's go a little more slowly. I think religious traditions vary in different regions of the country and that will affect people's perspective on this. Um, when I mentioned earlier that really without working, I found three articles in today's New York Times about her. Um, one of them is uh, the columnist Bob Herbert's piece on the back page of the, the op-ed page. And he speaks very specifically about women being the critical um, lever here, if, if she gets the nomination, whether she can win. That the number of men who say, I will not vote for a woman, is fixed. Now, what that percentage is, we're going to have to go out and see. And of course, you know, being an old University of Michigan graduate and having done a few courses in survey research, you know, we've gotten pretty good at survey research. But, you know, events change things. And um, we don't know what's going to happen in the next year. So, you know, it's possible that plus or minus 3 to 5% of men or women. I mean, remember, there are also uh, a number of women in this country who say, you know, I don't think that either that women belong in politics or they say, well, women may belong in certain kinds of politics, but not anything that has to do with international politics. I'm sure many of you know that in your communities, it was always much more common to see women, for example, running for school board. Okay? couple of reasons. One is that it was local. Women didn't have to leave town to serve in that kind of capacity. But also, of course, school board is connected to family and children and the idea of you know, women caring about those issues. We're still getting used to the idea of women in national and international politics. We've had people like Maggie Thatcher help us with that, right? Um, and we've had women prime ministers elsewhere now. We're getting a little bit more used to this. Germany's headed by a woman, right? But it, it's taken us some time. So um, what a number of pollsters are saying is, is that women will be the key for her if she gets a nomination. But remember, she may not get the nomination, right? Uh, that, that too will be interesting to see. Yes? 